creating killer melodic techno synth pads. I guess that that is today's video. You ready for that? Let's go do it right now. Hey, check it out, I'm in Little Kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. If this is your first time here, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you will not miss out on anything. Hang out till the end of this video, I'll tell you all about Patreon, Discord, I'll tell you all about the sample pack community-based thing that we're doing, I'll tell you all about the Kitchen Club, so there's much to say, stay tuned for that. Also, the music you'll find on Bandcamp, I'm working on an album, so much of the tracks you're hearing right now, I'm in the process of fulfilling them. So creating killer melodic techno synth pads. You know how Art Bob and Tale of Us, Bicep and, and Botsin, you know how they all got that sort of like lead sound that's that's going? It's always being supported by something underneath and those pads are very smooth. They always sound like a lot of emotion. They're not that difficult to make actually, so today I wanted to get into it. Now, I am using the OB6 for that. I will give a disclaimer because everybody goes like, yeah, but I don't have an OB6, blah, blah, blah. That's what I'm using. Follow along because you can do it on pretty much any synth, but you just need to just listen. So don't look and comment too fast. Just listen to where I'm taking it. And I'm going to maybe see if I can get one of my uh, small little friends, namely the mini tire, to go and have a song and dance together and see how that relates to each other. So I'm not so much going to go into a complete production. The beat is already there. I just wanted to just like take you into pad land and see if this is something that could help you out. It also works even if you don't know how to play stuff because the sound is that rich that whatever you will play with it pretty much is going to sound cool, right? Okay, without further ado, I will take you over there and let's see if we can make it work, shall we? Let's go. All right, gang, welcome. This is the live setup, <laughs> again, expanding. Okay, I'm gonna go from right to left for a change. I've got the DM12 sitting here, which is a Midas mixer. Uh, it's going to get used sparsely today because I'm only gonna go in with the drums that are coming from the Octatrack over here, coming out of the stereo output over here. Uh, 9 and 10 that is. Then I've got the Akai MPC-1 taking care of the MIDI information, mainly for the Minitar, the OB-6 and the subsequent 37. Um, then those are joined at the hip, usually that's how I do it. So the MPC-1 is uh, sending MIDI through the uh, Octatrack, so when I press start here, you can hear that the drums are all starting. And in turn, the 1010 black box is getting MIDI from the Octatrack. And I've got a MIDI fighter here connected to the 1010 black box. I've got a small modular setup sitting over there. It's for the future. Um, the witch has got a, a very busy IntelliGel Metropolis sitting here. There is a Pittsburgh Audio ADSR. And then I've got uh, the new Clavis uh, Mark II oscillator and then there's a black lopus uh, voltage control filter by erica since this thing is just otherworldly makes very spacey sounds for another video not for today today we're going to get into making pads now uh, melodic techno has got a certain sound that you would like to get into fast uh, so what i'm going to do is play some beats that's those are the beats that i've already got set up i go i'll quickly go over what the beats are Pretty much, it's simple, uh, simple melodic techno kind of vibe. I'm on 125 BPM. I've got my kick sitting right here. I shortened it a little bit. Let's get out of the MIDI page. Then I've got um, the trusty sort of like Michael Jackson beat it kind of loop. I've got a disco loop that I've chopped up. So if I will go over here and if I'll go to my slicer space, you'll see that. Let's stop this beat. Let's stop it over here as well. You can hear. that I sliced up that beat because I want it to stick on the grid. From a lot of techno, I want um, the cool vibe out of the 70s. So I love the whole um, vibe of the disco uh, drum beat, but I don't like the fact that drummers were not always uh, in time. So I've chopped it up and I stuck it on the grid. So that plays there. I'll go to my quick mute mode again uh, on my Octatrack so that I've got all my channels that I want to activate sitting right here. So the kick and the uh, drum loop. Uh, then I've got a clap here, 808 clap, that plays together with that loop. Take it out. You only hear the snare, so it smooths out the, the snare a little bit. Then I've got a hat loop 
bit on the loud side, by the way. Let's turn it down a little bit. Cool. Kick. And then obviously there's this thumb. So this in itself is already moving, right? This is going in a certain direction. Now, do you know how Dead Mouse and, and Botsin and all those cats have those really cool sort of like pads on their music? Today I'm going to use the OB6 for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize a patch, a patch I should say. This is what it's playing right now. Let's see. No! So, manual and right. Okay, let's stop it quick fast. Now what we're going to do, what we have right now, is a simple triangle wave which sits all the way over on the uh, oscillator one. So this, this is just vanilla, there's nothing happening. I'm playing it. So what I will do is I will play something that comes to my mind now uh, on those beats. Um, and I'm trying to just like make um, chord progression with minor and major chords, right? So if this is just a C minor chord, I'll go for a... Something like that, right? So let's see how we... Going to go into for a cycle. Um, press overdub, so I'm going to wait for the cycle to complete. See what we can do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and. Nice. And what I didn't do is save that initial patch. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So let's go back. Here you go. Right. Save. So that's my initialized patch. I'm going to take out my drums. Now we're going to shape the sound a little bit. Let's see what the filters are doing. Nothing at the moment. I'm liking this, but I think I would lower this first oscillator a bit. Well, let's see. This is a square wave with pulse width modulation. So there it's gone, as you can hear. Now, I want this to be a little bit more aggressive sounding because you need the filter to really work on it. So obviously, having more sort of like uh, transients on it, it's going to help us out. Nice. I'm liking this. So far, pretty simple. Nothing. There's also a reverb that I'm going to get to in a second. Let's see if we can put a sub octave underneath. For now, it's only the one oscillator playing, right? So can hear that. No noise, no VCO2, and no sub there. Let's add some sub on the knee. Nice. And there's a note that doesn't really sound like it's supposed to be there, as you can see. I was very untidy. Uh-oh. Okay, take this out. No. Very cool. So much this back to where it needs to be. So tidy it up. I'll tidy it up later. For now, I just want to make sure that I've got all my notes playing. Looking okay, nice, right? Cool. I might add a top line over this to um, sophisticate it out a little bit more. That's for later on. Now, what I would want to do is see what the filter does. I'm liking this so far. Okay, so if we've got the sub-octave. We've got just a basic assault here. Let's see if we can add another sound to it, all right? It's getting richer and richer, as you can hear. I'm going to put some distortion on there as well, so if I hold, 
uh, effect, the distortion will come up. Nice one. Not too much reso. I'll go the resonance goes down a little bit. Let's see if we can play a kick drum. That will help us out. I'm going to add some reverb. Yes. Nice one. Okay. Let's not uh, get ahead of ourselves here. See what that VCO2 does. liking it that high. Playing around with the pulse with a little bit. What I love about these oscillators is that they just gradually go from one setting to the next, right? You can go from a uh, uh, saw all the way up to a square gradually so you can really pinpoint where you want to be now what we are also going to do is see if we can get a little bit of um, envelope going on the filter some cross modulation as you can hear I'm dramatically increasing it so you'll hear what I'm doing, but I want the sound to not be static, but move a little bit, you know? Reso down a little bit. Got some pulse width modulation going, and some um, modulation on the filter. Go back in. I love a bit of that low end also on the filter, over on the on the sub octave. So a little bit of sub underneath. See what we can do with some LFO. And that we're going to stick on the filter as well. Slow it down. Even slower. I'm not so sure if I like it on the filter, by the way. Let's go. Yeah. Nice, okay, there you go. Simple wins the race, don't go in too fast. Okay, now I'm going to open up the effect. Take that off because it's just screwing my head here. See if we take off a little bit of the distortion. There you go. And that hole needs to be even bigger. So I'll make it very long, very dramatic. What we're going to stick on one off see if we can put some delay on there what 
obviously not so much. So, you dial in how much you would need here. I'm thinking. Let's see how it works with the grand scheme of things with the rest of my drums. on top of those um, and you only hear the top line and open up the filter let's save this so now we've got our uh, sound saved let's stop it for effect so I'll play this is the top line on top of the And I love the dramatics between the major chord, the minor chord, the seventh chord here, back to the major chord. That's what's making this dramatic. So the OB6 with a sun filter is absolutely an amazing sort of like thing to look at because this does that kind of um, bad thing, yeah, exquisitely. I mean, obviously. Uh, most of 80 sounds is that kind of vibe. So I love that on my music. Now, obviously, this is not complete without using a bass line of some sort. So what we're going to do is see if we can get our little friend, the Minotaur over here, or, um, to help us out here. Yeah, Not so much going to get into this beast over here. I just wanted to make sure that you see how pad structure um, is done, how I do it. Um, yeah, volume, please. Thank you. All right, beats. Two, three, go. Okay, let's go and find our bass line. Are you playing something? Yes, you might be. I need to delete some sounds that might be in there. Yeah, looks like uh, I've already played something. Copy this over, so select everything. It. Now I know that if I'm playing something here, Baseline underneath pads, I want the baseline to do much of the melody, the dancing around, because the thickness of the bass is what you feel coming out of the woofers, right? That's the one you feel. So instead of sometimes you'll play just stationary notes, which is nice, but if I'm lower my filter, you won't really hear that I'm really <laughs> trying to show off that I'm playing a bass line here. So this is where you can actually get some groove going on your beats as well. Let's take out those pads and listen to what I'm doing. So 
to like here, right? And for the first time, I nailed the bass line for the first day. <laughs> Call the newspaper! All right. Let's do those pads. Take out the drums. See what's happening? So you got two things that are working for you now. So you, you now you're gagging for the filter to be opened up, right? On the OB6. So now switch it around. Liking it, liking it. Still some left on the filter. One, two, three. Rest of my drums. Kick in. And obviously you will play a lead line now with the sub 37. Okay, lower everything down. Look at the reverb because the, the hole here is a bit too dramatic. Because I want everything to sit within the beat, like in the grand scheme of things here, right? Okay, I think I can open my drums a little bit. Or lower the what I have. This is a little loud side. Go into the hole. The hole is on effect B. So turn down the mix a little bit. Now, usually I would think, what can I add to it? This thing does pads very well, so this is why I'm mainly using it, because pads are out of an OB6. Come on, what's not to like here, right? Uh, it does arpeggios as well, but I would usually use an arpeggio on um, the um, subsequent. Hmm, tempting, but that's another video. So uh, what I wanted to stress, I take out the drums, listen to this. And if you're layering sounds, try and make it so that everything complements each other, right? So what you would want is the sound to yeah, be complete. So there's envelope generation on the sound a little bit. If I'm taking that out, and if I'm lengthening the notes, There you go. Oh, wiggly knob. Now I've taken out all the percussive nature, so it's more smooth, it's all cool. And this, if you play with a kick, let's take out this uh, effect that's playing constantly on the 10 10. One, two, three, go. Hitting a lamp here and hurting my hand. Clap out. So, that's much that you can do. I mean, these pads really give a sense of emotion, right? So Now, the thing you have with the SEM filter, it doesn't self-oscillate like with the Moog or at least with this. I mean, those filters will go to squeaky, squealy town, so it can really hurt people. This is much more of a creamy kind of buttery kind of vibe, which I love on pads. Now, if you're up layering a layer underneath, Obviously, this is how you would sound design that bass, but I would love to have my bass line be the extra oscillator that's missing from this sound a bit. You know what I mean? That's how I'm looking at, 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 at how I would approach this. Now, going back to what this sound is. So I'm trying to just like find a spot where the filter frequency does much of what this 
filter is doing. This is a Moog filter, and Moog filters go absolutely neatly together with this kind of vibe. I mean, the whole 80s has been built on that, right? So yeah, that's how um, you could state that it's working. Let's just see if we can get a bit of um, delay going, because I've got my effects as well. <laughs> okay, that's my uh, modular. I did not wire up a... Uh, Again, not a video. Sounds nice, though. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, effects as well. So what I would usually do is um, stick those effects on an auxiliary send and have that work together. Didn't do it today because this one's playing, which it shouldn't be doing. Okay, so yeah, pretty much that's it. What else can I tell you? It's a simple concept, but um, another thing to note is you have to find sounds that in themselves can pull the whole record, yeah? I don't need to play that bass line. That's how cool this synthesizer or this sound is. Does it need to be the OB6? No, I probably think you don't need a $2,800 uh, synth to do it. What I would try to tell you is like, get your sounds to be as wide as thick as you can. I can even just go in and say like, well, let's pan spread it a little bit so that it will widen the sound even. That's coming out of the center. If you got headphones on, or great speakers, and then... Nice. Man, when I'm getting to the pearly gates, probably this thing will be waiting for me there. I love it so much. Hey, guess what that's, guys? I guess that that is that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Did you feel it? <laughs> I felt it, I really do. I mean, I love the fact that I'm slimming down my sort of like uh, setup. And that never works. I can never slim it down for some reason. I don't know why, but that's just the way it works. Anyway, I don't think that it needs to be set in stone. This is the way I work it right now. I love the OB6. I love the subsequent. I love my little small modular that, um, you know, I'm not a modular buff, but I love to make like otherworldly sounds with it. And I love the fact that the OB6 got all that old school kind of vibe that I know from when I was younger. I love that synthesizer. So that's why I wanted to just like get it into my arsenal and make some, um, uh, choose with it. So uh, let me know what your preferred synth is, what you use, and what you use for packs. Do you use samples? Do you use like stuff? I mean, even the MPC one's got some really cool onboard packs and samples as well. But you know, um, yeah, today I wanted to just go into the OB6. So if you made it this far into the video, you are an absolute superstar. I'd like to welcome uh, my community. I'd like to thank all the new subscribers. I'd like to welcome Rodder as my patron for this week. Welcome aboard. Cool to see you out in the Discord chat. Um, it's cool. Really some cool music. Thank you for supporting. It's much appreciated. Um, listen, we are going to make some uh, sample packs together with the whole community, which means everybody gets to um, throw some, some samples into the mix. This whole sort of like uh, AK pack is going to be the Analog Kitchen community sample pack. If you got a better title, let me know. But if you join up, it's cool. So everyone that contributes obviously is going to get that pack for free, you're going to use it. And we're going to make some tracks out of it as well. So if you are ready or your music is ready enough to be released, oh, final, that's what we want to do, then let us know um, because that's what we're going to look at as well. It's absolutely a, a amazing times. Now the Kitchen Club went to Rotterdam this last Saturday. I'm over the moon. The sound system was amazing. You know that the Worm Club has got a moving dance floor? So I felt like Harry Potter. I was waving my wand, wand I should say, which is like the filter knob on the uh, uh, subsequent. Man, the floor just started to move because the floor vibrates with the sound. So people were dancing like, oh my God, <laughs> three-dimensional sound design. That's just, <laughs> that was the first for me. So that was absolutely amazing. So the kitchen club is also a thing. If you join up a, pa uh, a Patreon, uh, a chance if your set is there and you're in my neighborhood, you just get to be on the lineup, right? We'll just do stuff together. Because to me, I think this whole thing is a community-based thing. Okay, now, um, have I got some more news on the mixer? Not as yet. We're trying to get some dual concentric knobs. We've uh, reached out to somebody in Germany who says, yes, we're going to get them. Yes, we're going to send them. No news. So I'm going to have to look slightly at changing the design up a little bit instead of getting dual concentric knobs. Maybe just go like one filter, one uh, amp. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we're still working on that. Now, um, is there anything else that I would like to say? Not so much. I'm, I'm really enjoying the vibe at the minute. Let me know where you are, what you're doing, how it is in your neck of the woods, Anna. If not anything else, I guess I will catch you next week. You know where.
on another video in a little kitchen. Out. And a side note, don't forget to save.